Mitchell, thank you yeah. very much for submitting your film, mate. No worries, no worries. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, I like what you... I'll say, if you can just repeat that for me. I like what you guys are doing, so I was happy to, to submit it and see how it goes. How's your, um, how's your, because uh, for other people that don't know, Mitchell's just moved house in the middle of all of this. So how has that gone? Oh, it's, it's been a, a bit of a, a bit of a pain, but it's, I'm here now. I've set up all my, um, my soundproofing and got my lighting and stuff here now. So no, it's good. It's good. It's good. Was it, uh, was it a big move to a different part of the city or? Not really. Um, I'm in a, like a small town. I'm not too far from Sydney. So it's like, it was like a 20, 20 minute drive to my new place. And so it was pretty good. It's pretty good. I was lucky. Yeah. Cause some people, when they move, it's like a serious move. And then it's like mm. everything you remember. I was always going to try and tie the title of your film in then. <laughs> remember when <laughs> I used to go to the shops. <laughs> <laughs> well that's it that's all you know what that's quite a it's quite a poignant uh title for your film because people are thinking remember when we used to go to the park or remember when we used to go to the cinema or whatever you know so it was a, a very good uh yeah. a very good a very mature uh title choice i think uh so how long have you been uh filmmaking for and because it this is not meant to sound patronizing and i have I don't. I make sh some short films, but not many. But I think it's a really mature film. I think it's really, really well made, and the performances are very good. And uh, who, um, without giving spoilers away, who's doing the singing at the end? Um, <laughs> that was that's uh, um. So you know, Rainy Rodriguez. Uh, a little bit. She's an actress, okay. and we kind of sprinkled her around in this short film and that's her at the end just to like give a hint of of who's singing because we kind of bring that up in each little segment yeah absolutely yeah so yeah so, so um how long have you been kind of filmmaking because i know you were at uh, sae uh and who else who was who um who are the other people in the film can you tell me a little bit about your production yeah sure so um I made the short film with Josh Summers and Matt Bartlett. Um, we all got on Zoom calls and we, we wrote bits and pieces. We, um, we planned it out. We were going to all shoot it together. Then the coronavirus happened. So we did it all separately on Zoom calls. I edited it all together, tried to make it all sync and look fluid enough so it didn't just look too choppy. Um, and yeah, yeah, I've been filmmaking since I was young. But um, the last couple of years is really when I started like going for it and getting a bit more recognition. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so, sorry, <clears throat> just had some, I just had a bacon sandwich because it's early morning. It's 10 o'clock here. So, I was thinking, oh, is this going to be really, is this going to be, I was thinking morning or evening to you. Uh, I was thinking, is this going to be really difficult to schedule? And it's actually been pretty easy for us, isn't it, the two of us? So, yeah, it's a happy medium because we've uh, been scheduling calls all over the world now, and uh, we've had people from Canada, so there two o'clock are seven, uh, seven p.m. at night. So it's kind of the roles reverse. So uh, yeah, uh, well, that one was just an hour ahead the first the first episode, so that was relatively easy. And depending on where you are in France, it's almost falls in line with the same time zone if you're near. Spain. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a. Uh, it's been a bit crazy, but it's been really fun to get to speak to you, uh, people like yourselves. And and the variety of the films is crazy. And yours is the first from Australia. I think we've had three now. Uh, we've had a music video in this student house, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll have to share that with you to see what your other filmmakers in Australia are doing. But yeah, we're, <laughs> That's cool. we're, it, is so, it was so cool to have a, a super international film in our festival. I know we're all connected online now, but it's still pretty awesome to to receive something like that you know yeah it doesn't it doesn't seem like we're so far away when i like call you like this but it really is yeah absolutely it, yeah it's crazy isn't it <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm in this i you're in a brand new house i'm in, uh i'm in this fit, um house we've purchased and there's there's no flooring or anything there's there's exposed concrete <laughs> so i'm wearing these heavy heavy slippers to uh 
to make me feel more comfortable, you know. And I've got this giant, this giant softbox now, so uh, I'll, I'll, send you a, I'll send you a photo. The setup is a real mess in here. There's a photo I posted on, the, uh, on our Instagram account because that's where we're kind of pushing most of our content. And uh, I did a behind-the-scenes photo. Oh, yeah, this is a, a time for tidy off. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the same as me, though. Like, except mine's like a lot more low budget right now. It's literally just like some circle LED lights. Like, well, just so it. I can... How was your... Yeah. Did you have like a little setup for filming uh, videos at home? Uh, your previous mm, house? Yeah. yeah, I had like a little office. Now, this is my little corner. And I've got all my stuff here, so it's good. Oh, it's all it's so nice having everything in one place, isn't it? It's so good. I'm, I'm like relaxed now. Like it's there's no moving or anything. I'm just here, and yeah, yeah no. It's good. I want to buy some heavy duty um, Pelly cases. That's what I want. I know they're expensive, but <laughs> that's, I really want them because they look great as well. Yeah. But above above where we are now in in the, in this house, there's a there's a small loft area because we're on the ground floor. This is a split level. Um, mm. There's a little loft area, so I'm going to shove all my boxes up there late, later on today. Nice, nice. So en- enough about that. Um, so how did you, was it at SAE you met your um, filmmaking friends? Yeah, yeah. Um, the people I made the film with, yes. And yeah. how long did it take to, not put together, but how long did it take to write all over those uh, Zoom sessions? Um, about a week, about a week, we really knew what we were doing. Then um, it was about two weeks in total. A week we did calls every couple of days. Um, we spoke for an hour. We would write together and go through it and see if it fit each other's because we didn't want the tone to be up and down since like we're all making something different and we're not in the same room. So we wanted to make sure it's all consistent. Um, and then the next week is when we all shot each other's films we would put it on Google Drive, we would all watch it together. Then I'd get a basic gist of what I'm actually editing. Then yeah, it went from there. So, so you've uh, you've edited you edited the film, I can see in the credits as well. Um yeah. how was that process? Was that did you do everything on your own editing wise or was it very kind of by committee? Yeah, it, it was pretty by committee. Like I did edit all of it, then I would send a draft to them, see if they wanted anything changed, then I would go back do it, um, et cetera. So that's it. Um, so was this originally intended for your course, this film? Um, at first it was, but then when the coronavirus stuff happened, it all kind of pushed it away, but we still wanted to make it. So yeah, that's, that's how it ended up happening. So I just thought, let's just submit it to some festivals and, and uh, see where it can get. I think, I think people will really like this when they see it, especially our crowd, because it's um, trying to build a very small community uh, of, our, of our filmmakers and put them in t- touch with each other eventually uh, after it closed at the end of May. Um, but with your film, I, I was thinking that when I watched it again yesterday, that this you could easily place this in other festivals and that's something that's absolutely to be proud of. And that I know a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers that, if if they had huge changes in circumstances, they just think, "Oh, right, that we can wait. We can wait to complete that. We can wait to finish that." But was it yourself, or was it a group thing where you like pushed each other to to make the film and finish it? It was a group thing. It was a group thing. We all um, encouraged each other to do our best, really, um, and just just go for it and and actually just see where it can get us because we're we're all first years, so we just wanted to start actually making and and getting stuff on our resume. And this was one of the first things we thought we could do all together. Even though we're in quarantine, um, we thought we could really put something together that actually works. So so what was your, have you made films and shorts with, with the same group before? I know it's no, your I first haven't. year, yeah. So was it, what was the kind of um, creative dynamic like when you were in the same classroom or in the same house or in the same space? How did you, how did this differ? And was it, did you find it a, a better experience or was it restricted in any way? You had to do the, the fact that you had to do it on Zoom. I, f- I feel like it was restricted, but, but at the same time, I think it really benefited all of us because it was, we were restricted. Like, I feel like we all learned something from doing this because they haven't made 
short films from home by themselves before. So it was pretty, pretty new to them, but I feel like that was for the best. Now they can, you know, as we go through a course, we can actually start creating by ourselves. And um, yeah. I would absolutely recommend just keep making content because if this is your first year mm-hmm. film, then more, more praise to the three of you. To It's the worst to, timing. It's the worst timing, but I've got to say, you've got to see the, the absolute benefits of this as well, because what I've realized on, because I work as a photographer as well as what I do outside of that uh, for a university in Chester. And when you're invited to a Zoom meeting and you've got like, what, seven or eight people, as I, as I normally do, but I'm, I'm off this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do, I'm doing, I'm sat at my desk more, I'm going to be sat more at this desk <laughs> this week than ever, even though I work at this desk. Uh, sorry, yeah, there's a little ramble. Um, but what I realized when you're on a Zoom call and there's seven or eight or three in your case is that you've all got to bring something to it. I, th- I feel as though you can't hide anywhere more so than when you're in a group meeting. So it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a nice push. I think it, it forces you to be more creative and that's what, that's what we not, not depended on, but we were looking towards like, what can, what can people do? They're stuck at home, frustrated with not being able to go out and not being able to kind of see friends. Um, and I think yours is a fine example of what we were going for really. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Like uh, I'll, I've always been making short films by myself since I was young. So I've got um, a little bit of experience, but, but I feel like that's, that's good though. I, I like, I like creating by myself. Um, for the time being and I like and I felt like making this I got to utilize my lo- my knowledge of making by myself so and I feel like it, it was really beneficial for all of us because um, it's not it's not like you don't create by yourself like too much these days especially when you're doing a you know a screen arts production course um, so we all learned a fair bit from doing this and I feel like it's actually going to help us not only create films by ourselves, but actually communicate while we're making. Because there was there was so many back and forths. And yeah, it's that's gonna help so much. It's uh it's it's crazy, isn't it? Like you've got to see, you've, we've all got to see positives in um during this time and getting past it because you know everyone's in the same situation, aren't they? So um mm. I think what you're saying, improving communi- communication is the key to almost any production or a job because if you can't communicate properly and not clear enough, then things are going to fail and things are going to bottleneck ideas are going to get lost. And yeah. Uh, what I'm curious about is what, when you were, cause would you, how would you kind of dictate the roles? I can't quite remember from the credits. So you edited it, uh, you co-wrote it with the other two. Would you consider all three of you producers effectively? Yeah, yeah. I would consider us all producers because we all had a part in in creating it ultimately. Yeah. Um, so what were how far into your course were you when before coronavirus started? Um, it was towards the end of our first trimester. So yeah, if if that makes sense, it was we've already finished most of our works and this was one of the last um shorts we had to make before finishing yeah and um on you on your sae course how would how how do you get feedback is it all through meetings or how does that work it's through yeah it's through meetings with our teachers um not with this short film but but with previous works yeah we would join, go in our class and we'd have little screenings with 20 people and that all let us know you know the good things and the bad things and yeah. yeah, it's quite nerve wracking, that isn't it? That first couple of screenings on a course because I I did a, I did film production in Manchester, and when you do your first few, it's like your heart's racing. You want people to like your content. You don't, mm. you know, you just you just want people to be entertained. That's that's how I see filmmaking. If if you don't if you can't entertain people in like or engage people, that's you're kind of missing the mark in my book. And um, yeah, the biggest compliment I can say to yourself, uh, Mitchell, is just keep making films because this shows a real maturity, especially a first year film. And you, if you can keep you know, that push you had of let's complete this, if you can keep that drive, it's going to be essential for going forward, really. 
And I, I would yeah, highly good. recommend putting this into other festivals as well, if you haven't already. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, how- I, was, I was one of them people in class who, when, when we'd have, have our short on the screen, I'd be like looking at everyone, just seeing, seeing if anyone's smiling or seeing if it has any like emotional touch to them. Then there'd be other kids who would have their head down and they'd be like, oh, oh no, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to see. I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. And it's like it's, it's, it's such a good mix. I love it. I really love it. I like to try to touch people with these films. Most of them have been about mental health. So I, I kind of touched on that a little bit with this one. You did, but it, it didn't kind of linger on any particular thing too long. But the connection you have, sorry, the connection you had across all three was really strong. And that music at the end or the singing at the end kind of all really tied it neatly together. And I think it was how they gave it this energy. And the fact that, did you say the other two hadn't filmed anything themselves before? No. That, that's no, quite, they, it's quite impressive. Yeah. yeah, it's quite impressive what, what you what you made. Oh yeah, sorry. My question, my original question on this little strand was, um, uh, what? How exciting was it when you received the other content and you were seeing the materials generated by the other two? Oh, it was good. It was good. I I like to see what everyone everyone else comes up with because um, I, I I've always loved to edit and um, just seeing everyone's footage come together like this and it worked out better than I was anticipating especially because I had to I had to color grade it to make it look like it was within the same story and I had to trim the borders and all that stuff. Um, I really liked it and I really like working with them. They're, they've got so much potential. They're great filmmakers and they're really nice guys too. So yeah, it was, it was pretty good. What's this? Uh, I don't think it's a spoiler, but you know the photograph at the end? Yeah. What's the significance of that? And was it part of the course? Was it because obviously it looks, it's a really good, really strong photo. Uh, so um, what's, this, what's the history of that? That's actually funny that um, we took that photo like early on in the course. And, um, and coincidentally, that group of people just, we just happened to come together to make the short towards the end of the trimester. And um, we used that to um, kind of just tie, tie the short film up together and finish it off with a nice, a nice shot just to, yeah, to link up the story. It, it, wor- it worked pretty well. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. The one thing I would say is it, maybe you, you, you probably observe this anyway, but it added real production value to your film. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. Really, like, you know, like how when you see actors photographed with others in films and you know they spent time together to do those pictures and, you know, you've got actors in the mm. background, something like that adds more weight and significance to your film. So it's definitely worth kind of looking back and using this as a reference, piece of reference material as well. Uh, because like you say, you're, you're grading, I think it was pretty consistent across the board on the film and it looked like the same story. It wasn't like kind of botched together, you know, because you know what it's like when you've got two or three different shots or a, se- a sequence and you've not graded it right, it just jars completely, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's so, it. Uh, what do you uh, what do you edit on? Uh, what tools do you use? What kind of cameras did you all have? And uh, can you tell me about yeah. the kind of the tech behind your film? Um, so, I edit on Premiere Pro, and that's what I color graded on as well. Um, I normally shoot on an eighty D, so it's. It's, I, only, I think I only shot on like 30 frames. Um, I was, that's why some of the slow motion is a bit, um, there's, it's, there's a bit of yeah, low frame rate, but, but it, does, it does work in the end. They shot, I think, um, I don't know what exactly they shot on, but I tried to make all the frame rate really similar so it wasn't too choppy within each of our sections. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. I and think, I think uh, I shot on a 50 to 80 millimeter. Thing. Oh, I see. Yeah. And the uh, eighty—I used to have the sixty D, sixty D back in the day. The eighty D still got the fold-out screen, right? That's that, it. That helps yeah. so much. That's why I used it. <laughs> That's why I used it. <laughs> yeah, because I—I shoot. I bought. Um, I had a sixty D. I had a five D Mark II and a five D Mark III because I used to do a lot of photography and and video work outside of my mm. job. And 
Uh, then I had an A7S, and that's like a low light beast. And it wouldn't overheat like the other models. And now yeah. I've got gone to a pocket, uh, Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And it was a friend of mine said, you, you know, you don't need to waste your money on uh, a camera until it's right for you. And like a lot of people that have shot films for this festival have shot on their iPhones or Android phones. And if the story is compelling enough, then it doesn't matter what you shoot on at all. And exactly. And I think that the kind of jarring the uh, judder to the, some of the slow-mo stuff, I think it has this added charm anyway. And because you've got a strong mm. story, it, it doesn't really matter. A lot of those That's... things a lot of those things can get forgiven, you know, like noise and all of that. So yeah, it's uh, very cool, man. And uh, we were, we are very happy. And I was, I was very happy to receive it, especially coming from Australia. I was like, Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. So um, what, um, who your kind of, what do you watch? Who are your influences? So, and how did you get kind of first start uh, making your first shorts? Yeah. Um, so my first influences were really, Damien Chazelle um, really got me into like, oh, amazing! I can, I can tell a story with a low budget, like, and it can actually be really good. Um, obviously, Whiplash, that's like, that's a go-to when I first started filmmaking. Um, but then as I went on, I started getting more into the classics. So I, obviously, it's typical, but, but I'm a big fan of Kubrick. Um, oh, I love you, his you use of pop composition. Yeah, exactly. He's a pure yeah. master of every genre, like every it, genre. Yeah. Like, how could look, look at? Um, is it the is it the killing? You know, the robbery on the race the course. Killing? Oh my god! Like, yeah. look, he's done his he's done his Spartacus, science fiction. He's a master yeah. of horror. It's it's a big influence <laughs> on everyone because if you look at his cinematography, you think it's relatively simple, like locked 100%. off shots. But it's genius. It's genius. Yeah. You know, I've like, got my collection over there of my and, uh, physical media. I've got yeah. all my Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> uh, so, what are you? What are your favourites of his? Um, I'm a big fan of Barry Lyndon. Oh um, my god! Because yeah, yeah I, I don't really need to say much. Just every shot looks like a painting. I just love the, the pacing of the story. It's th- over three hours, but it feels like it's an hour and a half, two hours. Like, I, yeah, I, I love Barry Lyndon. Um, and the lighting yeah, of that oh my god oh my god <laughs> natural like, lighting like look at all the there's production stuff about how they uh, pop some light in through the windows because there's a famous shot of, mm. of the light actually in the back in the window on one of the shots yeah but the way they did that was he using like NASA lenses or something wasn't he uh, it's something like that yeah, yeah and, he, and he just he used a lot of natural lighting in that too yeah like, just <laughs> like there's a, a particular ballroom scene, or as, as I remember, because I've not seen it for many years. There's a there's a ballroom scene, and the amount of candles on set are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can you imagine? That's the one. I wonder what the job title of that person was. It wasn't lighting technician. It was like candle candle lighter or something. <laughs> candle lighter. Yeah. So, um, is there any? Do you have other filmmakers that kind of influence you, or you're a fan of? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Recently, I've been getting a lot into Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, I, I'm loving um, the favourite, um, the Lobster. Um, yeah, he's killing him sacred deer. Yeah, yeah, just unique stories, um, and he tells them differently as well. And it's it's nice to see something different in the new wave of cinema. Um, yeah. What What about kind of Australia, Australian like uh, Andrew Dominic? Yeah, that's he true. Is, I, he is. I'm loving amazing. And, Sorry, Jennifer Kent. Jennifer Kent. Um, she made the Bubba Duke, the Nightingale. Um, she's she's doing really well, like recently. Um, I'm loving her content. Yeah, yeah that Bubba Duke is is it, God. It's it's scary in parts, isn't it? It's <laughs> yeah, so I good. Just, like, yeah. are you uh, are you a big fan of horror? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I like anything with a good story. I like, I don't really have a particular favorite genre, but yeah, I do love horror. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards it uh, myself. Like, I'd love to have the time to have the splatter. And, you know, there's another filmmaker in our, our festival called Ian Rayburn. I made a little video of yesterday. 
and uh, that was at two o'clock this morning, so I'm a bit tired now. Uh, but yeah, he <laughs> he makes horror shorts. Uh, he's based in Canada, and it's just that it's like you can see the real passion on on what people create, and you can see that in his films. Mm-hmm. Like with yours, you can see kind of how you all feel, and throughout this process of uh, um, curating these films of, of people's submissions, you can really see it's like a coping, not a coping me- mechanism, but it's um, you can see a real flavor of who they are and they it's kind of stamped all over their story. I think that's important to have an element of, of that in your films, you know, um, mm. because a lot of them are personally in terms of how they're coping in isolation and that. And I, I was just, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised and thought, oh, this is great. And when he told me you were 18, I was like, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> really great. <laughs> so yeah, very, very good start, man. Yeah. Um, just to go back to, um, uh, what was it called? Uh, De- um, Andrew Dominic. Have you, have you, have you seen most of his films? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause the amount, when, Ch- when uh, Chopper was released, cause that was his, wasn't it? With uh, Eric Banner. Yeah. That was the yeah. most, I- that was the most imitated character amongst my friends in terms of, obviously, you know, there's a whole UK uh, Australia vibe, you know, we always love and uh, <laughs> love to hate and all that. Yeah. But Chopper, Chopper was like, it was a watershed moment for I Eric. I came out like born. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It it holds up, man. It hold, really holds up. Like Eric Banner really appeared mm. out of nowhere for me when that when that came out. Yeah. Because I think he was in something called was it Gold Nuggets or something, some Aussie film. Um. Somewhere. I don't remember. It's been a while. It, I, I remember um I remember killing them softly. Oh my um, god, how good's the anamorphic in <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. Like, um, the, yeah. yeah. Oh god, it's a beautiful it's a friend and I we're like how you would I met a very good friend of mine called Will and we met at university making films. Uh, few obviously years later, when Killing Them Softly came out, his missus didn't want to go and see it. And I was I was on my own at that point. So oh, let's go let's go and check that out. And we love Andrew Dominic from um, what was it? Jesse James. I thought, which is a piece. That's, of art, I was about to say that a work yeah, of art. And when we, yeah, when we saw Kill Him Softly, like my God, this is amazing. And I know this is mm. going to be gruesome to people watching, but it's got the most realistic beating of anyone I've ever seen. <laughs> you know the scene where um, Ray Liotta's pulled out the car in the rain. Mm. <sighs> Like, look at the editing there. Like, yeah. uh, is it uh, you? You highlighted is it Damien uh, Chazelle? Uh, is it the chap that did uh, w- uh, Whiplash? It's the same <laughs> film, but the editing in Whiplash and um, Killing Them Softly is just it. It almost makes you fall in love with the process. It you're not looking for the edits, yes, but you realise what went in, what what went on to get to that point. And the amount oh, of shooting, amazing. the amount of shooting they must have done is must be crazy as well. Mm. On it, oh, it, that that that's the type of material I would go back to, like re-study, like at school. Like it's it's so amazing. I've studied Whiplash so much at at SAE. It's just. Oh, Do you know what I love about that it's, as well? It's just a- is when you see that film and you see the end, and you know the how he's playing and he's like playing out of his skin at the end. And uh, J.K. Simmons looks at him and they look at each other whilst he's playing. J.K. Simmons realizes he, he's seen perfection and he rarely sees those moments in films. And it was like oh, it was something magnificent, the end, uh, that film. And it was, you know, J.K. Simmons more than deserved his Oscar for that. They're the type of performances that make you want to just stand up and clap. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, so uh, what are you kind of watching at the moment? What's your, what's your jam on TV in that? Um, to be honest, I don't watch too much television. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm one of them people that if you tell me to watch Game of Thrones, you tell me to watch Breaking Bad, it just makes me not want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, there, um, is, there is that kind of like collective peer pressure. I always check this out, especially with um, Netflix and Amazon and Disney Plus and all of that. When I saw when I saw the trailer for Tiger King on Netflix about the you know the anim, animal wrangler, I was like, oh, this looks amazing. But I was getting advertised at by my friends as well, 
and everyone's telling me about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll watch that on my own time. So I, I haven't even watched it yet. And it's, you get this kind of weird pressure, don't you, to watch it. It's ama- apparently it's amazing. And I know people that will genuinely only say if it is amazing, they say that. And it's just like, nah, I'm okay. It's almost like they've watched it for you and you don't need to watch it now. Do you yeah, know what I mean? that's the same as me though. I'll watch when um, Nicolas Cage plays him though. That's going to be gold. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope that's true. I hope that's true. Par- apparently it's, it's going to happen. Apparently. He's had like he's had like a bit of a micro resurgence, hasn't he, with uh, Mandy and Mandy. Color Out of Space. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't either. I saw Mandy though. Yeah. Um yeah. I just want to ask you, what was um what's your balance of your course with uh, theory and production? Um SAE is a lot more like practical focused. There is lots of theory, but it, the theory is more, hey, we'll give you the equipment. You film and learn yourself, then write in your in your journal what you've learned. That's like the type of theory we do at SAE. Um, we obviously do watch film and we do a lot of theory, but they, they try to focus more on the practical elements and the actual theory. Okay, how did you how did you uh, discover that course? Um, well, when I graduated, I obviously wanted to get into film, so there was a few film schools that. That really interested me. And SAE just, it just, when I went on campus, you, you just get that feeling that that's where you belong. And so that's where I ended up staying. Oh, so it's like a, a, a palpable buzz around filmmaking generally. Yeah. Like the course yeah. I was on, it was contemporary film video. And I wish I'd gone to a more specialized um, university or a f- film school. But I don't think I missed out. But I can I can imagine the buzz is great. Like you hear about uh, Southern California and all the you know some of the masters working there. You know like John Carpenter, uh, Coppola, Spielberg, all sorts. You know you hear about the the upbringing they have. So I think that you can see the level of filmmaking in your film. I know it's your first year, but I would definitely yeah keep plugging away and, and work with this group again. Is that something you're planning to do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, oh, they're, they're some of my really good mates now, so we'll definitely work again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how have, how have your um, course leaders and lecturers, uh, how, is that, how is the learning structured now? It's all, it's all online. Um, it's definitely different. We can't use their, their, um, their campus or any of their equipment, but, but it's pretty similar. They're still making us go out and shoot come back, get feedback. Then we're going to go do it in person once all these restrictions slow down. But yeah, Yeah. it's definitely changed, but it's still good, yeah. So um, do you have uh, different levels of equipment and stuff you can use depending on the year you're on? Um, Honestly, you could just, they've got like high industry standard equipment. You just rent it out and tell them when you're going to give it back. So Honestly, they're, they're really good. It's not like you're restricted to any of their equipment. You can get it whenever you want when you're on campus. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. The thing with my course is that, uh, or well, that was 2007 or whatever it was, um, you were restricted on the type of camera you used, like the expense, you know, the high-end ones until the third year. Yeah. And that was that was a kind of a, a kick in the nuts. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, I want to, you want to play with all the toys. You want to use Ari, Sign- you want to use Ari signature primes that Roger Deakins use. You know what I mean? Yeah. We didn't quite have that, but you kind of want to use all of that. But I think what we're seeing with films and videos, people are making at home or in isolation. It's, it honestly doesn't matter, does it? Because if you know, you've got Steven Soderbergh making a feature film about oh, is it unsane entirely on an iphone mm-hmm. and what and what was it moon dog labs uh anamorphic lenses i think it was anamorphic e, the adapter e, yeah uh it doesn't really matter it's like the writing is king isn't it it's true it's true and it's it's not like many of the audience notices anyway um i mean obviously they do but like when you shoot all with with phones like it, it can work and like you said before it's the story like um i'm a big fan of how um you know, John Carney, um, he, yeah. he filmed Secret Street and once. Now he wants to use like the most low-budget camera, but the story was so well-written and the music was great. 
it just works. Yeah, it is. It, that's so true, man. It, 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 it disappears, doesn't it? It really disappears. Mm. You don't go, oh, look at this. You know, he's using an ARRI camera or, oh, this looks great. Sometimes it is jars where I, I honestly think filmmakers make mistakes like um, uh, Michael Mann. When he switched to digital, it seemed like soap opera digital. Do you know what I mean? Like with yeah. Pub- Public Enemies and uh, Black Hat with Chris Hemsworth. I think it was too jarring. That immediacy, I think it worked in Miami Vice, uh, his, his feature film. But when you look at his film shot on film, it's not necessarily because it's shot on film, but it made sense and it looks beautiful like heat. You know, it's a work of art, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. when you look at Public Enemies, which is period. Now, when you watch period and it has that digital immediate feel, it doesn't work for me. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be shot off 24 frames, yeah. not, not 50 or something. Ryan Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Unless yeah. you're Ryan Johnson, where you oh, can yeah, color yeah, grade yeah. it to make made in film. Oh, no, exactly. Yeah, well, that's it. It shows a lot more, I think, maturity of the, of the tools. And I think Roger Deakins is creating masterworks in his you know, cinematography with digital as well. Because when you look at Sicario, it really, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's just beautiful to watch, isn't it? Yeah, all of Villeneuve's films, though, they all pop like. Oh, he's he is. He's probably the closest thing to a new Ridley Scott we have in terms of scale. Yeah, hundred percent. Every film he's released. Oh. Like, have you seen those productions? Yeah, he's made stills? some. Have you seen those stills of uh, his new Dune? <laughs> Oh my god! I was yeah. like a ch- I was like a child again that's just discovered sugar. It, it was <laughs> honestly, it was it was it's some of the best sci-fi. Look at Josh Brolin's uniform in that film in the production uh, uh, artwork. Oh my god! I can't wait yeah. for that. And look at the fact that er- myself and many others and many people online hold his Blade Runner up to the original, and it's a worthy sequel. Did you ever think that was going to happen? Oh, I mean, clear, clearly not because it, I'm pretty sure it flopped at the box office. But yeah, it almost. I don't think it broke even, but it, it didn't make its marketing budget on top of what it what it cost. Mm. But look, yeah. it, it's isn't it isn't it amazing? Like, have you seen the production photos of all the light setups? <laughs> I, I, I like Blade Runner twenty forty nine more than the original. Uh, oh and wow! Like, yeah, and that isn't even like like you would think it's controversial, but it's not even that controversial. Like. Like all my film school buddies are obsessed with it and they don't even like the original. So that's like, I know that's high praise, but yeah. I, uh, I came to Blade Runner if I'm completely honest. Like when I saw it originally years ago, I didn't like it at all. I don't think I was old enough to uh, understand it. I think I watched it too young because I've got an older brother that kind of, you know, you got family friends that introduce you to film. And uh, I, when I watched Blade Runner again recently, it, especially on a 4k print the final cut when you when you see some of those scenes in the rain there are elements of the original or large parts of it and i honestly do think the original is better uh especially the final cut because when you look at it and then you look some of the scenes of when you really pick pull it apart visually i think it is a better film and obviously i think it's because i watched blade runner one after blade runner 2049 (laughs) <laughs> and mate, so that's the order you like you hadn't seen the original you watched it after for the first time I, I watched it after i saw it in the cinema because i'm like oh yeah. like I, well, I need to watch it now well i've gone to the point where i'm obsessed with frank lloyd wright tiles you know like in deckard's apartment where when <laughs> if you watch it a few hundred more times then you'll you'll be like yeah you'll get obsessed with it even more so yeah. and uh yeah it yeah, that's what. So, Dale, Denny Villeneuve, I really think he's becoming a, a, a master now. I really do. Because I think, I think the first one I watched of his was. Have you seen Prisoners? That's my favorite one of his. I think probably one of my favorite films to this day. Yeah, it's it's so good. I was I was rather drunk when I was watching it, and I kind of I kind of sobered up because I was like, this is. What am I watching? It's like when I first watched Casablanca mm. and uh, Maltese Falcon. I was at a friend's house. We were just like, oh, just stick this on. I was like, oh, no, I don't want to watch an old film. And then you realize and you go, oh, my <laughs> God, what's this? This is amazing. 
and you have this kind of you have these watershed moments in your life when you watch you know like relationships friends and all that but when you really love film when you watch something that hits a chord with you like when i watch casablanca like oh my god this is what i want to do even if i don't really kind of reach that level which is extremely difficult to do it, and i just make my own little videos that really ins- we have those inspirational moments don't you oh exactly that's it we all have them them films that just that push you to make films yeah so true man um oh yeah i just wanted to let you uh, a little update i don't know if you've seen our, our videos on instagram but uh we've got um designers that are producing posters for every single film for the festival and they're taking elements of every film and making a one-off poster we're going to send out to you and to everyone else so you'll have a, a one-off uh, original print and a festival poster as well created by an artist in the uk so they'll get sent out to to yourself and your other uh, your colleagues um that's so cool um do you want, well, I've already, tell you what i'm gonna i'm gonna show you actually let me show you let me show you one of the posters so this will be a little sneak peek we'll incorporate into the uh into the podcast Let's see if we can find it everything's in my downloads folder i've got hundreds of downloads <laughs> like everyone's films i do I, I do admin almost every other night now for new submissions mm. so we got uh a, tr- a trilogy and i said mm, we can accept that the three separate three minute films we'll accept that and that one's from australia as well and it's three different thrill- oh, films that's crazy i know yeah we get we've had i think three or four now from australia which is i don't know how it, you know it's is it your hashtags or what i don't know um <laughs> but it's so cool man yours was the first from australia which is very very appreciated so and we've been asked Not to opera. we've been asked to create a laurel as well you know the little uh official selection for the festival so we're going to send those pngs out so you can incorporate into yeah. posters and that uh where is it I must have it here somewhere right i'll probably cut this little this little delay out of the podcast to no make, that's cool to, to make it more seem seem a bit more professional <laughs> uh, i've got it i've definitely got it here absolutely save those off that's so cool though like everyone's gonna adore having having a poster yeah it's it's it was good fun man i'll show you the laurel first this is the graphic that's going to be on all the posters and we're going to send this out so if you do create a poster for your film you're more than welcome to use this on the poster so let's check this out so this is i I did this yesterday at about one o'clock in the morning (laughs) <laughs> you know what it's like you know you burn them you burn both ends of the candle don't you when you're making films yeah. jesus like you don't know what natural light is anymore and you have to create artificial <laughs> light <laughs> right, let me share this screen okay do it in post yeah do it in post yeah oh my god the glaring eyes so if you can see this yes that's cool so that's our official uh festival laurel and uh that'll be on all the posters and we're going to send this graphic out to all the filmmakers for them to use as well. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. So, so wait, so every short film getting submitted yep. um, is getting their own poster. Uh, we're, we've got two students based down South and we're, we've recorded a podcast with them. Every film has got its own unique poster and it's, it's over 35 now. So they've got a lot of work to do, but they're super committed. So it might, <laughs> it, might, it might take a little bit of time to kind of, produce but once it's posted it's like we're gonna we're gonna post out all of the worldwide we've got one we're gonna have to post one to israel now so we had one from uh, tel aviv recently which is very cool that's so cool right i'm determined to find this the, this artwork because i definitely definitely downloaded it. <laughs> you know when you can't find you know when you've got hundreds of files to deal with it's it's insane isn't it right okay. yeah so we've got uh we've got an italian uh designer an 18 year old uh, and she created a new artwork for the podcast. And it, it was just through Instagram. Like the amount of connections yeah. I made through Instagram now, it's like, it's, inc- it's insane. And it's taken me yeah. this long to realize that. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, last time I checked, you guys had over 140 followers, I think. That's pretty good. In six weeks, yeah, of something tiny and small. You know what I mean? 
So yeah. Let's go to downloads here. Is that right? No, that's an actor's portrait. I'm so sorry to uh, stunt us like this. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. right. Let me find it. Click on that. Oh, I was going to say, it's funny you say that because I, um, I won a prize at a, a Sydney Film Festival. Amazing. Um, early, yeah, early last year. For a short film I made all using my phone. I think I, Congrats, I won a couple man. hundred bucks. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. Did you get sent um, a the one of those little graphic saying official selection or anything like that? Um, yeah, I did. And I also got delivered a little piece of paper. But it's like yeah, like on cardboard saying like um actually I'll just show you. Yeah, please. It's like please. right next to me. Um I just put it in a frame, but Oh, awesome. Like, there's like man, 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This oh, is definitely. So long. Um, no, it's all right. It's not even late. I think it's like seven. Yeah, it's like half past seven. Like four times in. Tam's in the, Tam's in the designer. Uh, so it's not that. That's my. <sighs> Absolutely have got this somewhere. This is why. This is ridiculous now. Is that one of them? That's, that's Crisis. Okay. Right, I've got I've got one of them here to show you. Finally. Uh, let's go to Fit to Page. So, I said to the the two designers, Tamazin and I think it's James. I hope I've got James's name right. That. Um, to take elements in in any way they like from each film. So it could be uh, something that's used in the film, like your photograph or something that's like a bike being rode inside a flat, which one of them has, which is a really nice kind of uh, blue bike. So I'll show you that one now. So share screen, uh, screen one. So this is a film called Crisis. Um, so this is one of the posters we've had designed. Oh my god! So it's got the laurel at the top. It's got the festival. It's got the dates. It's got the hashtag we use. Uh, so there's the there's a graphics designer and there's a there's an artist that both work together that know each other and they're so we're making one of those for every single film. It it might take some time, but it's it's kind of a nice little gesture we can send out to people submitting their films to our festival. And that should be uh. That should be a, a one a one sheet size. So there's a there's a debate about which which format, which poster, because there's a UK size called quad poster. I'm not sure if that's in Australia as well, where it's 30 by 40 inches, so it's 40 inches across. So it's more like a rectangle rather than uh, you know like a, a portrait one. Uh, so we're sending those out to everyone, and then so you'll get two. You'll get one for your uh, film, and then you'll get uh, the overall festival one, which is. That's going to be completely different. I've not seen any of the uh, examples of that yet. So it's going to be like, where's Wally? Do you know what I mean? With all the elements <laughs> of the different films, because there's going to be so much content yeah. on it. So yeah. That's, well, well, thank you. Everyone's going to. Yeah. It's like, there's a, there's a 10 year old girl who created an animation, Francesca. It was like a hand drawn animation. I think she'll absolutely love it. Seeing her superhero stick man on a poster. That, that should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank no. you very, thank you very much, Mitchell. You've been an absolute star, mate. And uh, please keep making films and, and keep in touch as well, especially on Instagram. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, for sure. I'll keep, I'll keep in touch and keep promoting all that stuff. Absolutely, yeah. So, and uh, I'm glad your house move's gone okay. And hope you get your, uh, your internet soon. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, you, thank you, you guys, for doing this as well. Like us, like filmmakers are, are loving this and we're loving the interaction there's nothing like any festivals we've had before and it's it's honestly it's it's really good so well, thank you for having me well i appreciate you saying that mate and we we especially myself and chris that he's the other founder of the festival he um we kind of both wanted to make it as a as a platform for people to you know an outlet so you can show your talents and and have that and one of the things that I love doing is making sure everyone feels like 
they're included. And it's not just, oh, thank you for your film. It's been accepted. Then you don't hear anything back. Mm. Yeah, you know, we wanted to make sure that every mm. single every single message, every single email was uh, as though you're getting it from a human being. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a robot. That's- so that was that was my input, and you know that's what I'm trying to persevere with and, and do for the rest of this week and the rest of the festival. It's so good. It's so it's better than just going on like Film Freeway or something and just getting you accepted. Then you never hear back un- unless you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's it's yeah. really good, and I feel this. Everyone. Yeah. So we're going to try and do it next year in one form or another, but move away from the, not isolation, but move away from the reasoning behind the festival. Do you know what I mean? So make it, yeah. we'll, we'll make it where everyone has to make it outdoors or something. <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, so uh, we're, really wel- we're welcome to suggestions, by the way, for any future content to do with this festival as well. So anything you kind of suggest or, want to hear about and ask just kind of fire away and we'll always reply and get back to everyone for sure yeah we'll be in touch absolutely well thank you very much mitchell you're a top guy and and, and your film uh remember when is fantastic thanks alex all right take it easy mate we'll see you soon you too man see ya bye bye